how can you expect no problems without a well-created AutoCAD block? The importance of making a solid block is always overlooked by AutoCAD designers. This is why you will encounter problems like this, this, and more. I'm the Lazy Architecto, an AutoCAD certified professional helping you save your time in AutoCAD. Creating a correct block using best practices isn't always easy, but it is important if you want to avoid headaches in your future drawings. Without further say, these are my best practices to make headache-free blocks in AutoCAD. Okay, AutoCAD drafter, designer, or architectural student, let's start. So the first best practice to create a block in AutoCAD, it's decide if you need to make a block. So in order to know if I really need a block, I follow this rule. Whenever I have the need to have three identical objects or more, I use a block. Let me show you. For example, here I need three of these bollards over here to protect these gas meters. Two here and two for this other one. So if I apply my rule of three, here I will need to make this bollard a block. And this is what we're gonna do. Now here comes now here comes the second best practice to create a block. Always have the objects that you're gonna make your block on layer zero. So let's select these bollard objects and let's go over here in the ribbon, click on it and let's type zero and let's select. Not only that, but please make sure also the objects that you're gonna create your block, the color is set by layer, as well as the line type, the line weight, and the transparency. Placing your block objects on layer zero will guarantee you that when you create your block and place it in the specific layer, the objects will actually inherit all of the properties for that specific layer. So now we're ready to create the block. Let's select the objects and let's use the block command by typing the B shortcut and pressing enter. And here comes the best practice number three, block naming convention. So here, please, Please use descriptive names. Don't name your blocks as, for example, 301, 302, and so on. Be very descriptive here. This is important because, let's say, six months or one year from now, you're not going to be able to find your block easily. For example, here for this specific block, I'll start with the actual name bollard so that way i can easily find this or insert this block by using the b letter on my keyboard and i and i will easily find it follow it by the underscore next i next i could also add what type or material this bollard is for example steel I could also add the dimension of this bollard if I have it. And I even go farther myself to specify if this is a dynamic block or not. I will add the shortcut DYN if this is a dynamic block or not. In this case, it's not, so I'll just get rid of it. But you got the idea. Be very descriptive with your names and also make sure don't use space between your words. This help. This will help your CAD manager whenever they need to create a custom 
tool or command or lisp because spaces it's not friendly when creating these customization tools once you have your name correctly so here make sure to uncheck here a specify on the screen and pick a point for your base point so click on it and here comes AutoCAD best practice for creating blocks number four think very carefully when you place the base point for your block for example do you think it would be beneficial for you to to make the base point of your of your bollard block here no of course because when you insert this block your block will come from this point which is the base point and usually you don't place your bollards over here from the top right you always place it from the bottom either from here or from the center so i'm gonna place my base point over here in the center of my bollard which is over here in the midpoint so i'll click on it autocad will recognize the units for your block in this case my drawing units is in inches because i am in the us using inches so don't even need to worry about this one here you check this to open the block editor automatically and for this example we need to check that because we're gonna add a wipeout to this block so it can hide the hatches behind this elevation so i'll click so i'll check this next the objects specify on the screen we already selected our object so we don't even need to worry about this one next Make sure convert to block is checked because we don't want to delete the objects after we create our block, either retain it. So make sure convert to block is checked. You can even add a description here for your block. For the behavior, you can make this block annotative. I won't do it for this one because it's not needed. A scale uniformly. Make sure the task checked because whenever you scale your block you want to scale it nicely hello exploding make sure that's checked so in the future you or some of your peers don't have problems such as not able to explode blocks in AutoCAD once we have that let's click OK and you can see that AutoCAD automatically send us to the block editor here we're going to add the wipeout so let's select all of these objects and use the join command by using the j shortcut and pressing enter so this is a polyline that we can now use to create our wipeout so let's use the wipeout command and press enter let's select the polyline option and let's select our ball art oops we're having a problem here where it says the it says the polyline might be closed and made out of only line segments and basically this is happening because if we explore our polyline again to show you you can see that these block is made out of lines and a, a arc so wipeouts in AutoCAD don't work with arcs but since you are in the laser architecture we already created these two wipeout for circles and arcs so let me use it is this one over here and I'll give you the link later so you can watch it if you don't have it so I'll click on it and click inside my ball art now once we have our wipeout here comes best practice number five in order to avoid future problems with wipeouts 
showing in front of your blocks, let's do the following. Select your wipeout and use the draw order command and choose the back option to send your wipeout to the back. However, that's not all. Many people probably will stop here thinking that the wipeout is good now, but however, we need to do an extra step. What we're going to do is select our objects and move it to the side. This can be a random distance, 12 inches in this case. And then again, we can move it back to its original position. And this is so important because one of the rules to never have your wipeouts showing in front of your blocks on other drawings is to create the wipeout first. So by doing this trick, we make AutoCAD think that our wipeout was created first and then we created our object. So now we can close block editor from the ribbon and click save the changes. As you can see, our block was created successfully showing the wipeout and right now it's on layer zero, but if we place our ball art on the correct layer, in this case, in this case, ball art new, you can see that it will automatically get the properties from that specific layer, in this case, color green and so on. Now let me copy some of these polars over here. And these are the best practices to create blocks in AutoCAD. Now it's your turn to share this video with your friends so we all have better blocks. I almost forget, here is the video for the circular wipeout and here is another video for the best practices to create attribute blocks.